Hello everyone, Shinto Bean here playing some more Warhammer combat cards and in this video I'm going to be using the card filter to show you all of the different sub-factions in the game which can be identified by typing in the keywords into the card filter. So, uh, here we are in the collection and we're just going to start in the top left with Eldari and work our way all the way to Tyranids. And before we start, let me just say that I am not actually an expert on 40k lore or anything. I'm a fan of 40k, uh, but that's it. So I may make some mistakes. You can feel free to correct me uh, if I do. So anyway, let's start with the Eldari. And we're going to type in the Asirani keyword to find all of our just regular Eldar units. We've got two Warlords, the Avatar of Cain and the Zephyr Blade. We've got a lot of ranged units. Uh, a couple melee units and some psychers as well, but overall just a whole lot of cards fall under uh, this Asirani keyword. Now in contrast to that, uh, we can find the Dark Eldar by typing in not Dark Eldar, but uh, Drukhari. So here we are with the, the Drukhari. Two Warlords, and they have no psychers. They got a mix of ranged and melee, uh, but definitely fa favor the melee uh, attacks. They got a couple Berserkers and lots of Outflank and also a couple cards with Poison as well. So they got a pretty distinct uh, flavor that sets them apart from the other Eldari. And then the other smaller sub-faction are the Harlequins. Let's see if I can spell this right. Harlequins, there we go. So just five cards for the Harlequins. So they do have two pretty strong units. The Shadow Seer and the Solitaire are very solid cards. And of course, there are a couple other uh, keywords that uh, I missed that uh, have, are not included within those three, but those are the three main ones, so that's just what I'm going to stick with uh, for this video. Now, moving on, let's go to the Necrons. Now, the Necrons are a little bit easier to divide. Uh, they are, fall under two main dynasties. So the first one is the Sautic Dynasty. They've got three Warlords and a good mix of units. They've got uh, some cheaper ones as well as... Uh, many of the stronger, uh, high-cost bodyguards also fall under this category. These are kind of the older Necron models. Uh, contrast that with uh, the other big dynasty, which is the... Let's see if I can spell it here. The Zarakhan dynasty. So, all of the newer Necron models kind of fall under this uh, dynasty. They can be identified with their sort of rusty brown color scheme. And a lot of them are actually kind of newer in the game, so don't have them at uh, very high levels. So, uh, that's it for the Necrons. Moving on to Tau. Now, the Tau, I actually don't know a whole lot about the Tau, honestly, but uh, if we type in Tau, making sure to include the apostrophe, we can find uh, all of the cards that are identified by Tau. A lot of them have the orange color scheme, although a few of them uh, are an exception to that rule. Three Warlords and just a lot of, uh, a lot of ranged units, because that's what Tau do. They have a whole lot of shooting and not much else. Now the other, the uh, the other keyword is the uh, Viorla, and I'm actually not sure where the apostrophe falls. Is it un after the O? Nope, that's not it. Is it after the R? Viorla. I don't know the spelling. Okay, yeah, I think that's right. So Viorla. So yeah, they've got a lot of the drones. They've got this white color scheme going on. Drones and battle suits. So again, lots of ranged units there. And then, we can't forget about the Crutes. Crutes are uh, my personal favorite. They're kind of the underdogs, though. Only five cards. And they're not really that great either, other than... I guess the Crutox is actually pretty good. But it would be fun to make an all Crut deck, but unfortunately that's not actually uh, possible in the game at this point. No Crut Warlord. And Commander Farsight also did not fall under any of those categories. He's just kind of a, doing his own thing. Okay, next up our Servants of the Emperor, 75 cards. So, pretty big roster here, and lots of sub-factions. Let's see if I can hit them all. Now, let's start with the Astra Militarum. So, these are your Imperial Guard. We've got Commissar Yarik as the Warlord, and a whole lot of ranged units. we got the Artillery, the Tanks, uh, the Valkyrie, and we also have uh, a whole lot of Infantry. Lots of infantry there, so that's the Imperial Guard for you. 
And it looks like they are also including some of the Catachans in there. Alright, uh, next up let's go with Adep Adeptus Mechanicus. Is that actually going to... Well, I guess there's a, a limit to the amount of characters you can type in. Maybe that must be it. Okay, let's just type in Mechanicus. And that should give us, uh, yeah, our Admech forces. So we got uh, Magos Dominus for the Warlord. And they have a little bit more ranged, but they've got some melee mixed in there as well. Very cool looking models. I'm a fan of the Admech myself. Alright, uh, moving on. Let's try to keep the keywords a little shorter here. Uh, we'll go with the Soror Sororitus. So these are your Sisters of Battle. Uh, just one Warlord at the moment, Candace Viridian, but the Warlord that will actually be released in about 24 hours from now uh, will also fall under uh, this category. Uh, a few bodyguards here. We've got uh, some range, some melee. Not all of the Sisters of Battle actually combo very well with Canonist Viridian. So you do have to use uh, cards from other sub-factions. If you just go pure Sisters of Battle, it's not going to be very good. Alright, let's see, what have we missed? There's also the Inquisition. And actually, I'm just not going to type it all out because I'm not entirely sure what the keyword is, but the Psychers. These are mostly uh, Psychers fall under this category, and they got, of course, Inquisitor Greyfax as the Warlord there. And then, finally, another smaller subfaction are the Assassins. And I'm not entirely sure what the keyword is, but we'll just uh, keep it at that. So, yeah, we got five Assassins in here. I guess the Death Cult Assassin isn't actually part of uh, the others, but yeah, we got the Eversor Assassin, Vindicare, uh, Calexus, and Calidus Assassins. So, those are all pretty strong cards, and they can find their way in a variety of different builds with different Warlords. Alright, now let's move on to the Space Marines. Now, of course, the sub-faction within the Space Marines, the, the chapter, with the by far the most uh, representation, I think you could probably guess it, are the Ultramarines. Boys in blue. So you got one Warlord, Captain Acheron, and quite a few bodyguards. It's 4, 8, 12, 16, 20 bodyguards. Now they've got just a lot of everything, ranged, some melee, some psychic as well. So yeah, Ultramarines have a whole lot of models. And I think the next most populous are actually the Dark Angels, which, uh, when we first started, when I first started playing the game, there's actually, I think, only one single Dark Angels card, uh, and it was the Terminator, but since then, uh, their roster has expanded a little bit to get some uh, pretty good cards. I think some of the ranged units are the ones that I like to use. Uh, let's see, next up, let's go with Space Wolves. Space Wolves actually have some decent representation and pretty good theme going on. We've got Logan Grimnar, and they are all about melee. They've got, you know, Berserkers, Deathblow, so they definitely prefer melee above all else. And let's go with Blood Angels next. Blood Angels, we've got the Warlord Lieutenant Tolmeron, and a total of, looks like eight bodyguards. And Blood Angels actually kind of favor melee, which does not actually synergize at all with their Warlord, uh, Tolmeron. So, going with the pure Blood Angels deck, it's not going to be good at all. Uh, because Tolmeron needs ranged units. So, so yeah, that's the Blood Angels for you. And then we've got Grey Knights. Grey Knights are pretty good, and of course they're tied together by the, the Psychic theme. So we've got Greymaster Voldus and a number of bodyguards uh, that can combo pretty well with Voltus. And I guess finally we'll go with Death Watch just to include Watch Captain Artemis. Only four bodyguards, none of which are very good, so they don't really have that great of representation. Of course, with Space Marines there are a whole lot of other chapters, uh, many of which do have some representation. Uh, you can see the Salamanders actually have a few cards as well, but it's going to take too long to go through all the other chapters, so we're just going to leave it at that for now. Moving on to Chaos. Now, Chaos actually have uh, some really nice representation uh, for the different Chaos gods, and they also have a pretty distinct theme. So, let's start off looking at Nurgle. Type in the Nurgle keyword. We've got uh, Glogarthrox as the Warlord, and a whole lot of really tough, resilient bodyguards. You've got some small, endless units with fodder. 
and they've got you know cards with regeneration and also poison for dealing damage uh, through attrition so nice theme going on there very fitting uh, for uh, Nurgle and next up let's go with Zinch Zinch of course have all of the psychers they're all about dealing psychic damage they got the Warlord Ariman and yeah definitely some of the most powerful chaos psychers uh, fall under this category now next up, let's go with Korn. Now Korn actually have a surprisingly few bodyguards in here. There are other Chaos cards with the red color scheme, but they actually fall under a different uh, sub-faction. It's the Crimson Slaughter. Uh, for Korn, it's mostly just the demons here. Uh, but of course, they are all about melee damage, and they combo very nicely with the Warlord Skulltaker. Uh, next up, let's go with Slanesh. Slanesh did not have many cards. Uh, for quite a long time, but uh, now their roster has expanded a bit, and uh, the legendaries, in particular the Keeper of Secrets and Celesc, actually combo very nicely with uh, the Warlord, uh, the Mask. The others are kind of a mix of ranged and melee. And then finally, we've got the Black Legion, led by Abaddon. And these have most of the powerful ranged units, but also a mix of some others. They've got a Psyker and a few melee units as well. Okay, so that pretty much covers Chaos. Now moving on to the Orcs. Uh, the Orcs consist of a few different clans. Uh, by far the most numerous is the Goth clan. So they have a whole lot of bodyguards. Two warlords, Gazgothraka and Boss Zagstruck. And definitely a lot of the most powerful cards are part of this uh, clan. So yeah, lots of representation there. Uh, next up, let's go with the snake bites. And I can't remember if it's one or two words, so we're just gonna type in snake. Okay, there we go. So yeah, they've got the new warlord, Mazrog, and snake bites actually did not have many cards uh, for a long time, but with the new models being released, they've got a whole lot of uh, squigs, those beast boys, so they got some pretty good uh, cards in there. And then, just in terms of uh, numbers, I think Bad Moons actually have uh, a number of cards as well. Looks like nine bodyguards, some really powerful ranged units in there, including the Gorkonaut. And then, yeah, the others just don't have very much representation. I think uh, Boss, uh, or Captain Badruck is one of the freebooters. I think there's maybe a couple bodyguards uh, for them. And then Boss Snickrod is part of the Blood Axes. And there are a couple other clans as well, but uh, we're not going to get into that. Now finally for the Tyranids, Tyranids also pretty easy to divide. Uh, we've got the actual Tyranid, you know, aliens, and then we got the Gene Stealer cult. So let's start with uh, Hive Fleet Leviathan is the most numerous. They've got uh, this sort of pale color scheme going on. Three Warlords and a whole lot of Bodyguards, including some of the really big monstrous units. So yeah, High Fleet Leviathan definitely have the, the biggest numbers here. And then there's also High Fleet Behemoth, I think, but uh, that one does not have nearly as many cards, just uh, five uh, Tyranids in there. And then we've got our Gene Stealer Colts. Gene Stealer, we'll just type in Gene Stealer, I think that should do it. Uh, two Warlords. And a whole lot of cards, uh, many of which are very cheap fodder and infantry units. Uh, they don't have much in the way of heavy support or vehicles, but a whole lot of cards. So you, you could make a deck full of uh, Gene Stealer Colts, but it's not going to be uh, all that strong without the support of the actual Tyranids. So uh, that's it for the sub-factions, at least all that uh, come to mind. Let me know if I missed anything and what you think of the, the representation of the different uh, factions in this game. Uh, let me know if there are any sub-factions that you think are underrepresented, uh, things that you'd like to see more of uh, added to the game. Let me know in the comments, uh, but thanks for watching and I will see you next time.